Uh, welcome to Craft Addict K. I'm Carla. I'm Sam. I uh, hope you en enjoyed our intro video. If it worked the way we wanted it to work, Samantha was able to put in um, some footage from our first day of vacation where we went in, uh, with my husband fly fishing. So we'll put more video at the end um, if you like that. And give us a comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, so Sam, let's talk about vacation. Okay. <laughs> so... We're going to say Sunday was really our first day that we felt like we were on vacation. And what did we do? I forget what did we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a busy vacation. I know um, we stitched at some point. We did. We went on a remote stitching um, to a place in Pennsylvania. It's north of us called Volant. Um, they do have a fly fishing place where you can fish and it's release. Creek. It's a creek um, or a creek. Depends on where you're from. It's a creek. It's a creek. Uh, so what we do is my husband went there, he wanted to go fishing. We didn't really want to go fishing. So we actually sat up in our chairs and we had a stitching in the wild event where we sat and stitched. Um, and Samantha will put in a picture here. The next thing we found out is the same weekend that Volant was having a what they call a wandering wizards event and everything was Hogwarts everything was Hogwarts so this is a shout out to the school of magical stitches apparently this happens every every year it's always the last weekend in July it was um, the third year that they were having it yes this was their third annual year um, the lots of antique stores at Volant, a lot, of, a couple of restaurants. It's an older community. I remember going there when I was a little girl, um, and it had a lot of like kitchen stores, and it just seemed like it was a lot of different things, that, unusual things you don't see in every day. Um, nice little country town, um, kind of off the beaten path. There was a, a candy shop that was playing the Hogwarts song, like you just came to Hogwarts and. There was kids running around that had their Hogwarts gear. Uh, gear on, their magical wands, adults with their witches caps, and it just it was really neat. They had a place called the Apothecary. It was that a had, tea shop. It was a tea shop because they had a lot of loose leaf tea, a lot of Hogwarts paraphernalia in every place we went. Um, we're gonna just insert some pictures that we took. So we hope that you enjoy. I forgot to videotape and it was just so hot and everything was so busy. But yeah, it was really um, humid too. It was really interesting, but we are gonna insert some pictures here. All right, then we rolled into Monday, and Monday was uh, let's get organized. Mom, clean off all these bookshelves. Get rid of the books that you have read and you're not going to read again. Um, I am an avid book reader. I somewhat, I think I am. Samantha's more so than I am. Um, but I tend to be a book collector, and I had a lot of Mary Higgins Clark books because I really liked her. I think I've read them all. Um, a lot of different books genres. Um, I tend to gravitate towards mystery, but I had some Amish books with Beverly Lewis and just a, a vast array. Um, so we compiled a bunch. I took a picture of them in our trunk <laughs> before we took them to Goodwill. And uh, Samantha will show you a picture of that here so you get an idea how many books we had. Samantha. Hmm? And then what did we do? Yeah, where we, we went somewhere. Were you on vacation with us? I yeah, but <laughs> you don't remember. I remember we dropped the books off at Goodwill, and then something happened. 
This is why we have to have a video blog because Samantha will forget about her 2019 vacation if we didn't. Um, so we went to Barnes and Noble in Cranberry. That was that day? That was that day because there's you, so many days we've gone places. <laughs> if you've given away your books, you need to get new books to take their place. So um, we did go to Barnes and Noble. Yes. Um, and did you buy any books? I did, but I did not bring them up here with me. But I did want to go over a book that I've read. Um, where the Crawdads Sing. Um, if you haven't read this book, it's by Delia Owens. It is an excellent book. Very easy read. Definitely a, a murder mystery, something that you're not expecting. Um, it, it is a quick read, easy read. Definitely highly recommend it, Where the Crawdads Sing. And I've recommended it to some coworkers who have read it and came back and said they really thoroughly enjoyed it. This is the only genre of this book that she has. She has a lot of research papers out, um, but this is the only genre. I certainly hope, if anybody knows her, that she will put out another book because I would be a definite avid collector of that. Um, Samantha, you got a book. I got two books. I got, let's see, I got The Forgotten Book by, I'm not going to try and pronounce that, but it'll, it'll probably be in the description box. Um, it's about a girl who, like, whatever she writes in this book comes true, and then somebody's trying to steal the book for evil or something. And then I got I'm Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter. And, um, somebody dies in a family, and she's learning, like, all the stuff that's, like, holding her family together, I think. I don't know. I've seen it, and I've heard that's a really good book, so I picked it up. What are you currently reading? I'm currently reading uh, in spurts <laughs> Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Um, I got it by gift and I'm like halfway through, which I need to finish it. And I'm also reading like the first book in Harry Potter for the first time on my phone. So it's my traveling book if I ever get bored. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really good. It's different from the movies sometimes. And I'm like 100 pages away from finishing it. And it's pretty good. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm reading Stephanie Meyer's The Chemist. Mm -hmm. um, just started it. I want to read it. <laughs> and, yep. You're already on the list to get it when it's done. Um, so this is a... a uh, and we went out for pizza while we were oh, yeah. in Cranberry. Remember? Yep. We ate Blaze Pizza and it was really good. Yeah, Blaze Pizza, really good. If you've not ever eaten at a Blaze or if you have a Blaze or a Rise Pizza in your area, um, you should check them out. Uh, less than two minutes, you have your own personal pizza cooked the way you want it with everything on it, whatever toppings you want. It was actually really good. Um, <laughs> oh, was good. So that was Tuesday. That was an event, a fun-filled day. Of course, we've stitched along the way. And this is a cross-stitching vlog post, what, what have you. So um, we're going to talk mainly about cross stitch so if you've just joined us welcome if you are returning welcome back we're so glad we got a lot of comments on our last video it was really exciting Samantha and I love the comments um, so please keep them coming we appreciate the feedback it's it's we like the interaction I've commented on everybody's comment in one way or the other um, so uh, hopefully you know, you like my comments and you, you stick around and Samantha and I usually see her. And I did tell Samantha, I said, you know, if you ever want to respond, you can respond to any comments as well. And she'll sign her name, Sam, so that, you know, it came from her. But usually up until this point, it's been the two of us just sitting in our stitchy spots and taking a break of reaching and stitching to <laughs> kind of look at the comments and talk about them. And then we formulate a response that I've been posting. So, um, so you look for that, you may see some more responses from Samantha. Yeah. Um, Tuesday, which Tuesday we went <laughs> which to, Tuesday? no, I was thinking, um, Tuesday we went on a hike. Remember I had said in our last video, hopefully we would be able to go on a hike to Cleveland um, and visit some stitchy shops. Well, we hiked to Cleveland and I visited some stitchy shops. So I do have some haul. You're going to go to um, three, but we actually went to two of them. Yeah, we went to two of them. We went to Crafty U and we went to Just Stitching. They're about 10 miles apart. So if you're going to go really? to one, you might as well go to both. It's probably good, like um, five minutes away. Yeah, they weren't far away. So Crafty U, my husband was with us. They have a, a bakery right next door. So husband went to the bakery. Samantha and I shopped the shop. Yes. Um, I did 
purchase some items. So I'm going to go ahead and share the haul portion. Some of these I can remember getting. Some of them I don't rem I kind of finished kits and things. So one of the things I got, sorry for the crinkles because I didn't take them out of the package. Oh, I wasn't thinking about the light. Will you ever learn? I know. <laughs> So one of the things I got was scattered seed samplers. It's an Abby's needle keep. Um, and I don't have one of these. And I asked the um, person that was there, I said, I'm really looking for a needle keep. I don't know if I can, a simple one that I would be able to finish. So um, this is what I have. So I haven't started it. I haven't kitted it. It's all DMC floss. Um, so I'm gonna give that a whirl. Um, I also got while I was there, I know why I didn't take them out of the bags because some of them I got floss for and I didn't want to mix them up. Mm -hmm. um, is Little House Needleworks Autumn ABCs. Oh, there they go flying. There they go flying. Autumn ABCs. Uh, and I got the classic color works to go with that. They actually had this one finished in the shop. And of course, you know, I was like, oh, that's really pretty. I like that. And they had all of the seasons, but I... I was love the scarecrow. trying to work my budget, so I'm hoping I'll be able to get the winter, uh, summer, spring. Um, all of them. Yes, all of them. But I'll start with autumn. Autumn's coming up, and I got all of the floss for that. You can see the classic color works floss. Um, they have a lot of floss in this shop. Uh, a lot of a uh, couple things that they they were sold out of that I was looking for, but for the most part, they had most of the colors. They did. They had most of the colors. Um, I did get some floss for a, another project that I picked up. Um, let me see. Sorry, I'm trying to kind of keep it separated as to what I got where. I found this pattern there. They were having a sale on foreign designers. Like, like it was European like they said everybody's doing that that Christmas in July and they wanted to do a European trip. So it was if it was a European designer for the month of July, they were giving 15 or 20 percent off um, and they had them set up kind of in their separate place. So one of the ones that I saw was uh, boy, oh boy. Puntini, Puntini? I'm not Italian. Um, I don't know where this came from. So, designed by Paola Rizzi? Rizzi. Rizzi. Um, I probably chopped that name all kinds of which ways. Um, but it's Coolest Man in Town. This is the pattern. And I did get the floss to get it started. And I also picked up the fabric. And it's it's a small project. Yeah. Um, but I got it as a hand dyed gray fabric flare 32 count. I already cut it, already surged around it. So it's ready to go. I just need to iron it. Um, it and there's like a little a button. There's a button that comes with this kit too. That's a little snowman that sits in the middle. And it says, the, I'm, I'm the, the coolest, coolest man, man in, in town. town. So I just thought that was cute. And it, as soon as I saw it, I thought I need to do that for my husband. And then I realized there's a snowman on there. So I guess. He was the coolest man, not my husband, so we won't tell him. Um, if I can get that back in there. I believe that's, oh, one more. I did get two more things, I think, from there while I was there. Um, uh, you know, my friend Daphne sent me the pink flamingo from Mill Hills, and then they had a whole section at Crafty U, and I picked up Autumn Harvest. Um, from Mill Hill, and it's got the beads and the floss, um, but camper. a little camper, and they had it finished, and I thought it was really cute as a Christmas ornament, gave me some incentive, so I thought, well, I'll give it another try, well, <laughs> between that, pink flamingos is going on my tree, and so is this autumn harvest as ornaments for my tree this year, I'm going to have them done, but... Um, I think that was all that I got from there. I think everything else I got from other just stitching. Yeah. So that was our trip there. They do have wool, really nice shop. They do do a Saturday stitch in that you can get online. They have an online presence um, to reserve your spot. Um, they do multiple classes there. The owner wasn't there when I was there. I definitely will go back. It is a nice shop. It's got a lot to pick from. Um, the whole back room in framing, they do framing, uh, custom, like they will do finishing work too there. Um, so I'll, I'll go back. Um, the other shop I went to was Just Stitching. I've been to Just Stitching before. Owner's name is Shelly. 
Um, she has a floss tube channel called Just Stitching, so um, definitely check her out if you haven't. She does give, her videos are very short, about 15, 20 minutes. She gives really nice tutorials, teaches you different things, tips and tricks. Um, and, and she truly feels like this is her, as a shop owner, it is her duty to teach the rest of us or some of us and answer our questions if we have questions on a different project, different techniques. Um, so she's super nice, super, super nice. So while I was there, I picked up a tacky bob um, and that is because I have two bead patterns now, thanks to Daphne, that I need to do. And I was told that the tacky bob is the way to go if you're doing beads, that it helps keep your beads where they're supposed to be until you're ready to use them. So I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Um, I also, while I was there, needed some counting pins. I did not have counting pins, so I picked up some counting pins. And I picked up, um, aha. This is the Shiznick Bomb Diggity Slang Serves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Samantha, you can show yours. Okay. This is go. called a Thread Hopper. And Samantha has a blue one. I have a green one. Yep. Um, she, when we got back, she was trying it out. She's like, Mom, this is so slick. Um, it is really slick. We are going to do a tutorial later on this on how to use them, um, but it really comes in handy. It is, I this one, it says My Big Toe Designs is the maker of them, so you might want to look them out, look them up, um, but it's called a thread hopper, and I've used it. I'm going to use it later on today when I'm stitching on my Americana piece. And because it, when you need to find where you need to go, it's really nice to be able to just hop and not worry about it falling out and it's just it's really a nice tool so yep. do you have um picked up floss for and have kitted up ready to go and this is what i do these aren't new patterns i bought but these are patterns that i had either from when i went to stitch con i picked up the patterns there or i lost ebay on, on the shop yeah. yeah etsy shop somewhere i picked up these patterns and so, as you know, I've been trying to put them into small, medium, and large. And so I knew I was going on this trip. I started looking to see what patterns I had that was close to being kitted up, anything that I needed to have that I didn't have, um, so I could get myself ready. So, um, two of my, I, I had a couple of finishes. So my finishes opened up spots for new starts, right? When you finish something, you can start something. It's only so, logical. It's only logical. So I was trying to find some smaller projects because those are what I seem to be getting finished quicker because it is what I've been finishing. And I have this one I'm going to be starting. It's Waxing Moon Designs. Welcome to the Nut House. And I believe I got this. I ordered the pattern from... Um, oh, the place in Oregon that Michelle Bendy goes to. Oh, acorns. Acorns and threads, thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I got Michelle it. Bendy goes there, I'm like, I know I ordered this somewhere. So, acorn and threads, actually somebody did a video of the shop and I saw this and I sent her a message and said, do you still happen to have that? Because some shops don't, they leave old old models up. Don't do that. They make the rest of us drool and you can't get it anymore. So, um, I have the fabric, I have the floss, I am ready. Actually, I primarily kitted this up when I was at StitchCon. It was in my StitchCon pile, and I really wasn't missing anything on that. So that's going to be a new start. And the other one I have for a new start is Teresa Kogut's um, This Land is what it's called. I'm trying to pull it out. And I did get the... I did. Um, I picked this up at Keepsakes. I While I was there, I also picked up a gray fabric I want to put it on, and it's already ready to go it's in it's in the bag everything is in the bag it's just we've got away from the fourth of july and it's more americana so i haven't been kind of going towards those i've been looking more towards autumn but this is it Teresa kogut and she ha has a floss tube as well um be sure to check her out and she um primarily does a lot of painting that she does punch needle um, designs, painting designs. She is in the Punch Needles and Primitive um, Stitcher magazine. Um, I think she's been in it when we watched her video recently. I think she's been in it from the very initial conception of the magazine. So um, she paints a lot. Right now she's working on an angel chair for her local church. 
um, as a charity item. So just really nice uh, young lady. If you wanted to check her out, be sure you do. But Teresa Coda, and she's very artistically challenged. I wish, or challenge, chal not challenged, very artistic. Um, I am challenged with that. <laughs> but beautiful work. Does a lot of angels. She used to do uh, the teddy bear designs from, from before. I mean, just beautiful work. So check her out, Teresa Cogan. Um, so while I was out and about, I did, like I said, I grabbed the patterns. These are two I did not have stitched or did not have floss for it yet. So this one is a needle bling designs. Boo, I mean boo, and how cute is that? So that's going to be a start, and I did get my floss while I was there. I got this at uh, Crafty U. I just took the pattern, took a picture of the back of the pattern, and sent, went, to find them. sent her to find it. So right now I have the floss. Now I need to toss it on some fabric and pick out my fabric that I want to do this on. So... Um, that's usually how I do it. I get the floss first, then I go toss it on a, on my material to see which fabric sings with that floss. Um, if I'm at a shop, I might do it opposite, but usually I just, I grab fabric when I see it, and then hopefully I can find what I want when I'm trying to do project. Um, I did, this is the last one I think I'll show. When I was at um, Just Stitching, for a class, I went there for the Rivera's class. The models at Just Stitching, oh my goodness. It's all over the place. I don't, I've been in, I th she told me once that when you're sitting and she has classes, everybody looks at the walls that's, that they're facing and she has to sometimes move pieces around and people will come up to her and say, where did you get that? And it's been in her shop the whole time. She has a lot of um, models on the wall, on shelves. I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful shop. If you want to see some models, that's the place to go because she's got lots of models. Well, this is one that I saw and it's a Heinz it. Um, it's a Shadow Rudolph and it comes with a little Jingle Bell nose. Um, but this is the pattern. Does not do it justice at all. Mm -hmm. But I did she I did show it to Samantha when we were there. I said that's the Rudolph pattern that I got. And I'm changing the colors up on this a little bit. I want to use a variegated thread for the um the deer in the background to make it look more like it's a deer in the background. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm gonna try that out. I I'm debating on including some whisper in it, but I don't know if I want that much texture, so I think I'm just gonna go with the variegated floss. Mm -hmm. So I got some to try, <laughs> as you can see. I have some to, to give it a whirl, so we will see how it turns out. Um, but that is gonna be something, and it's small, it's not a very big project, so yeah, I think no, it's- Yeah, I thought it was gonna be like, big. <laughs> 69 by 53. So the stitch count, the design area, and that was on a 28 count. So I don't think it's going to be big at all. But it'll be a nice addition for my desk at work this, this winter if I can get it done. Or um, started. Or started. Sorry if you don't like haul. Um, <laughs> I did get a couple of fabrics at Just Stitching. Just Stitching has a lot of fabrics. Look. Oh, that's pretty. This is a hand-painted specialty fabric called Deep Sea. It's from Crosswing Collection. Um, hopefully that's not glaring. If it is, we'll take a picture at the end. Um, and then I've got um, Redbird, also from Crosswing Collection. Um, and this is a painted fabric, but... It's like a hot pink. Yeah, it's really pretty. So you can see the two of them side by side. Don't have a, pa a, a design in mind right now. I also got some, some needles while I was there at Just Stitching to try out. Um, but... They sang to me. They weren't real expensive, so I gave it a whirl. Um, while I was there, Shelly has her remnant bags out. And if you have a shop local to you that has a remnant section or you don't have a shop that's local to you and you just want to call and ask, if, hey, do you have any remnants that you could send me? Um, 
I did get three packs, mm -hmm. and the reason why I got them is because... I pointed them out. Mm -hmm. Samantha did point it out. This is a 28-count remnants um, hand-dyed fabric. Um, I think they're all 28-count. Yep, they're all 28-count, um, but this is why I got it. I'll be honest. Look. It's a small piece, but if you can see... I don't know if you can see. Look at the... It gives you, I could do an ornament on that. Yeah. You know, there's there's definitely, I mean, the pieces aren't big. That's why they're remnants. <laughs> That's why they're remnants. And they're not expensive. But if you want to try fabric, if you're, if you're an Ada person and you're like, you know what, I'd really like to try linen, but I don't want to spend the money on linen. Try a remnant. Get yourself a small pattern that you can put on the center of that and, and give it a try and see if it's something you like. Not all linen is created equally. Some of these are really coarse. Some of these are really soft and supple. So um, it really, you might not, it gives you an idea if it's something that you would want to try. And they're big enough pieces that you can do an ornament. Some, some, I think some shops call it their ornament collection because they're smaller pieces that you can take with you. Um, and you can try it anywhere. So... I did get those. I'm going to organize them somehow. That's going to be like my next challenge is figuring out how to organize them. But That's a problem you know, we have is just organization. You know, they're not order. all the same size. Some of them are bigger. You know, some of them are smaller. But, you know, it's something that you can... And that's what I do. When I see how big of a piece I need to have, I start looking at pieces that are that size. And I pull them out and I start flipping through and see what I can use. I've, I've done a lot of... Um, smaller projects on pieces like this that are just remnants and it gives you some variety some different colors that you want to try out so and especially if you're new just getting your stash built or getting an idea this will help you to see different colorways too I mean we have like there's oranges and browns and yellows and creams so and I don't feel bad when Samantha says hey I want to stitch that little coffee cup do you have something she can help herself to any of this. And she doesn't feel bad that she's, like, taken my best fabric that I've been saving for my deep sea or something project, you know. So, the last thing I got while I was there, and it was out of necessity. I'm going to use your Q-snap a second. All right. Samantha and I have been trying to do this out in the wild. Um, where we stitching have been stitching out in the wild. We have been skipped the word. Yes, we've been stitching out in the wild. And one of the things that she even mentioned when we went to Panera, there was a light over where she was sitting, but not where I was sitting. And I found it very She's difficult. She's blind. She is <laughs> blind. It is. I'm not blind, but it's very difficult to see sometimes, especially when I'm working on some of the higher count linens because I'm not used to it. Um, so we I decided suits. I needed a light. Yeah. I needed a light, and I I have a travel light that plugs in. And that's all well and good. But I, you can't take that into Panera. You can't take, you probably could take it into the library, but you really are dependent on somebody providing you with some electric source. Yeah. So I purchased, it's called a hammerhead. Oh, sorry. Let me reach off camera. Sorry. It's called a hammerhead LED book light. This yeah. is the container it came comes in. Um, and just, I got that at Just Stitching. And it's got a very wide clamp. You can see the clamp is really wide. That's huge. Um, and it has the LED lights on the end. Hopefully you're Looks seeing like a that. Hammerhead shark. Looks like a hammerhead shark. So if I was going to be out stitching, I can clip this, clip this on um, my Q-snap. I can turn on my light, and I have light. I can see. Um, yeah, I'm being blinded, sorry. but it's okay. <laughs> it's got two settings. Bright, less Slightly bright, dimmer. and off. So, and it's, I mean, no light, light. So, makes a big difference. So, I'm very happy with this purchase. It runs on three AAA batteries. Batteries came with it. Um, so, I'm looking forward to our next outing that I'm going to be able to use this. I'm really excited about it. Because I think it'll clamp on scroll rods. It'll clamp on my Q-snap. If I needed to and I wanted to, I could clamp it on my bra strap. I heard somebody did that, right? Yeah, somebody, that's what Shelly was saying, that somebody does it on their bra strap. And look, I can turn it on, and I can see what I'm doing. It's out of my way. So, showing you, my, showing you my bra strap, but 
it's got a gooseneck, so you know you can move this anywhere you want to. Um, look, so how nice is that? Sorry if I'm blinding everybody. I didn't mean to, um, but <laughs> definitely a great investment. So, all right. So that was a whole lot of talk about haul, but I yes. gotta tell you. We don't have, that's the most local shops really to us that we have. There's another one that's closer called With Needle in Hand. Um, and I do frequent that shop every opportunity I get to go to Boardman, Ohio. I try and stop in there. She's closed on Tuesdays. Um, and we've talked about her shop before. She carries the Valdani thread and she also carries Anchor thread. Then what I do like about Just Stitching and Crafty You is they also carry other threads that are there so and you can select it because a lot of patterns are you know call for specific and I am a call for girl I'm just starting to kind of branch away from the call for a little bit but not much mm. um and Samantha yes Wednesday do you remember what we did yesterday <laughs> look at her looking at the notes we went out to eat we went remember. out to eat we did we, we haven't been doing that a lot though no you dinner. know what we're on vacation and i told my husband part of being on vacation plus it's a staycation because we're really not going like on any big trips yeah said vacation means i'm on vacation too and he's on vacation too and in fairness to him he cooks a lot um, but on vacation, at least one meal we should have out because we're on vacation. So each day we've been trying to go out. It doesn't have to break the bank. Yeah. Um, we went to Firehouse Subs yesterday for an early dinner. Um, we had to go to T-Mobile to, you know, fix our phone situation. And um, then we went to Michael's and we went to TJ Maxx. And, and that's the first time. Yeah, first time. First time uh, TJ Maxx. Don't know if I'm a fan of TJ Maxx or not. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Target's but, better. Yeah, I kind of like Target better myself. So, um, so anyways, so that was yesterday. Oh, I trimmed the trees. So we did do some work on vacation. Don't think we're not doing something. Um, I did take, uh, I have an electric tree trimmer. First time I ever used it. I've had it for a year. Probably got tired of my husband nagging me about, I bought that for you. Aren't you ever going to use it? So more out of anger and frustration i decided to plug the stinking thing in and go go hit the trees in front of the house um and it actually was nice they it worked better i wasn't wasn't heavy i wasn't worried i was going to cut my leg off after i started it the first time so um and i trimmed the trees for the first time mark it down on the calendar it might take me a year before i trim them again how often are you supposed to trim trees I do not have a green thumb. I don't know anything she about growing or planting <laughs> anything. Exactly. She kills plants and I'm on the garden club and I'm doing great. <laughs> she is on the garden club at school and she is doing great. I kill it. So, yeah. all right. So that's what we did on Wednesday. We've been stitching every day. We've stitched something. Yes. So, um, let's talk about whips. Whip. Samantha segment. She said, Mom, I don't, I don't got much of a segment. Okay. I don't have anything. But yeah. Go ahead, Samantha segment. Let's see. Uh, how are you guys doing? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't I don't I don't really have a segment today. It's kind of just like neutral neutral segment. That's what it is today. Cause we got vacation and we're both sharing the experiences together, so I'm not doing my own thing. Oh. Okay. Did you have fun so far on vacation? Yeah, I've had a lot of fun. I slept in till noon, stayed up till midnight or two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> or three, last night up till three. Yeah. Um, what are we doing today? Sewing. Sewing. Getting a haircut. Yeah, got to go to the hair. I don't, this is this is me, washed, no product, going to the hair salon to get her hair done. Yeah. She's getting trimmed and I'm getting my hair layered. Yeah. Because so. I got really thick hair and it's hot. <laughs> it is hot. All right. Um, you asked a question in your last segment about, you wanted to know about music people listen to. And we did get some responses and I meant to write them down. Um, we had Aerosmith. Somebody said Aerosmith. Somebody said Johnny Cash. I said Johnny Cash. Yeah. Somebody else liked Johnny oh, Cash too. Johnny Cash is great. <laughs> um, can't remember. Um, I think there's a lot of country like. There was a lot of people like country. 
Um, so can't relate. <laughs> Samantha's not a big huge I'm country fan. I'm not a big fan. country person. There's like a like three or four songs that are okay, but besides that's like. Eh. So you're seeing us in a different location too. We're in front of my closet that's in my sewing room, and the floss, the behind, right Samantha's head is needle minders. Um, yes. that I've made or have gotten while we were at some of them. I have needle minders kind of spread all over the place. Yeah. I have a magnet board underneath my stitchy spot that has some needle minders. Our I chairs are use. over there. Yeah, the chairs are over there. Yeah. Um, the floss that's behind my head um, is for my uh, Haid Heaven and Earth design that I'm working on. And that's all the floss. And it's crinkled some of it because I took it. I used to be an avid bobinator, and I no longer bobinate because it tangles. I, my thread gets tangled. It's time wasted. I'm not sewing. Um, so I don't bobinate anymore, but I had the thread already for that kit. So I have it hanging and use it that way. Okay. So whips. So, we whips. teased you long enough. Let's yeah. talk about whips. Whips? Whips. You're up. Whip it. Oh wait, okay. Let's see. I have my hay. It's grown increasingly much so. And since. Samantha's going to insert a picture so you can see what it looks like. I've been going, working on this thing like crazy. It is on 25 count even weed. And it's advice from the caterpillar. It's a Heaven Earth design. Uh, it's a big leaf. And then I also, in my, on our Stitching in the Wild, I have this. It's called At the Beach. I'm using it for one of the extra credits for a profile. It's a girl at the beach. <laughs> It's on 14 count Ada. She needed to have a portrait. Yeah, portrait. Did I say portrait. Okay? You said profile, but that's okay. It's like the same difference. Okay. Do I need to show that? Sure. Okay. Here's my little mini haul that I had to hold on for a second. I got, what is this? Classic Colorworks Bing Cherry. I'm doing a Quaker Crow that I got at Keepsake. And um, put a picture of what it's supposed to look like somewhere. And I got this hand dyed gray fabric flare, 32 count by my lovely mother's stash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the drawback when you have a child. I mean, everybody comments about how wonderful it is that my daughter likes to stitch, but my, my daughter does not have a job. Yeah. She's 16 in high school, and the focus is grades not working. So yeah. um, when you don't have a job, uh, they don't get an allowance. Yeah. I'm not a parent that gives an allowance you just to give work an allowance. For it. It's absolutely right. You have to work for it. If you clean, if you cook, you do things around the house to help, then you get extra treats. So for her, sometimes it is a dip into mom's stash to try and find something that she likes. Um, project. Sometimes it's when we're out and I buy her floss, like this being being cherry. But I mean, she said that if I'm not using And the sometimes board, it is money. It. So, yeah. But I love it. Isn't that pretty? It's originally, it was a, like, that is going to be so, I hope it's focusing, but that is really going to make that pop. And yeah. she's going to insert a picture of what the pattern is because yeah. I'm anticipating this is going to be a start for her this week because she's been playing I with this fabric. I just love the color. So. The original pattern, it calls for like a charcoal color. And I was like thinking, oh, I'll just do it in like a purpley like dark purple mm -hmm. color because it'd be mm -hmm. like a raven instead of a crow and then I saw that color and it's like wine red and I was just like I want it <laughs> <laughs> all right any any other whips for you no I've only worked on those two <laughs> she's been working on those two maybe. I didn't mention that my hate was for the Hogwarts homework because that the the homework for this week's a little bit more challenging and I've got projects to keep up with it so I'm doing the second option of a thousand stitches Mm -hmm. And these are 10 stitches, so it's actually 2,000 stitches. <laughs> yes, it is. So, um, 
I have, and if you hear our dog whining, it's because he's outside and he has separation anxiety. He's my and baby. He's, and he's outside the door and I can hear him every now and then whine because he hears us in here. But if I let him in here, he is going to run he's, chaos everywhere. He's so going to sit on my lap. He's going to have to wait. Um, so I have some whips. Let's see. So part of the reason why I have whips is because I had um, school magical stitches homework. Yes. And it was to stitch on, you had to practice these different um, spells. spells. And one of them, and I'm going to try and open up my book here so I can make sure I get it right. Because I just finished all of my homework and I want to make sure it's right. Um, bear with me one second. Okay, so Expelliarmus. Expelliarmus. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? Expelliarmus. <laughs> well, there you go, that one. Um, I'm supposed to do 200 stitches in red metallic or red beads. So I, and by the way, this is take it off a Q-snap whip parade. So yeah. kudos. There you go. It'll probably be the last time this is off the Q-snap for a while. Um, so Expelliarmus. Spell Expelliarmus. Thank you. We're not um, sure how to say stuff. That's so I used Silver Creek Samplings, Dorothy's Discovery. Not sure what linen I have this on. I don't know if it's a 28 count. I don't know if it's a 32 count. It, it's, it's a mystery it's linen. It's a mystery linen. I started this before I started writing stuff down, apparently. Um, but you can see I'm still working on her dress. But I was able to get my actually 230 stitches down here in her shoes. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. And I did the shoes with this... Um, I clipped that on there so I wouldn't lose it. I got it from my local shop. It's called Accentuate. Um, and it does have some glitter. You can see that. Really nice to work with. I did like it. I put actually put it with a floss of the Salmon DMC 3328 um, to give it some meat. <laughs> meat? You know. <coughs> Excuse me, for lack of a better word. So hopefully I've got that right where you can see it. Um, so, and it's Silver Creek Sampling Store at these well, discovery. The spell is Stupefy. Stupefy. 200 stitches on something stunned. Or made you so. And I used, and it's also finished, um, I used my Rivera's pattern. Um, and I use Stupefy because I don't like spiders, and this pattern has a spider. And somebody commented on my Instagram that said the spider needs a name, and I believe we decided on Harry. I think Harry. I'm not sure. What a hog word. I think it was Harry. Um, so, as you can see, it is, um, this is a Rovera's. It was a kit. It came with a class that I went to at Just Stitching in Strongsville, Ohio. I did get the spider web and the spider and the moon. The moon, I did put some glow in the dark uh, DMC floss in the moon. I don't know if it glows. I haven't looked. <laughs> I will have to check that out. And what you see, I started over here is a cat. Um, it has the kit, comes with a scissor fob and a needle minder. Um, so I just, plenty of linen to do it on. So I'm just using this over here to do the cat and the other item. Um, I think it's a witch's hat. Yeah, it's a hat. Um, so I will be doing those. Those are going to be really quick and easy. I'm actually probably going to take it with me when I go to the hair salon today because I think I can get it done really simple. And it has a finishing kit, so I'm going to give my whirl at finishing it myself and see how that goes. So there you go. It's a finished object, an F.O. Um, so that also helped with the stupefy because I stunned my spider. Uh, while making his web and then after I was done with that challenge I went ahead and finished the web because I was so close to being done I just went ahead and finished it good job um <laughs> bravo <laughs> levy corpus is the next one and it was stitch on something in midair 200 stitches so what I did was um needle bling designs candy corn broom it's a candy corn fabric and the backing fabric I purchased is from Joann's. And I purchased the pattern at the Annex at StitchCon. And the fabric, actually, I have this doubled under. There's a whole... Like, she could, she could sew I a whole I can do one. a whole nother one, which I think I will. 
Um, so one for me and one for a friend. So, and then I picked up this fabric. I thought this fabric was perfect for it to be able to do the, the a pillow and make that the backing of the pillow. And I also, and I didn't show this in haul because I was going to show it when we talked about this pattern, but I got some rolls of pom-pom, I guess, things. I don't know. I've not done a pillow finish. I'm going to watch Vaughn um, Piper and see how to do this, uh, Vonna, and the, from the Twisted Stitcher, and see how she does her pillow finishes. I might do a flat finish, but I think it's probably going to be a pillow. Might be a flat finish. I don't know. But... I definitely have the fabric to do either one. So um, there you go, needle bling designs. And that is a finished object. So there's two finishes that opens up spots for two starts. They're small, but needless to say, they're still finishes. Yes. Um, the other one was Reducto, 200 stitches, something, something in pieces. pieces. So what I did was, thanks to my... Samantha. <laughs> Thanks to my great idea. Her great idea. Um, this is my, I did not write a card for this one, but I Shores think I remember it. Shores of Hawker and Hollow. It's 28 Count Joblin Ale from Picture This Plus. Yes. And um, I use this in twofold. It has 11 different blocks that are different pieces. And I'm putting the pieces together using my Reducto Spell. So that to make it one big full piece and I also used and I will show you it's it's really tall um, the fact that I changed this to my a memorial for my mother-in-law who passed um, if you can see the work I've done on that I'm almost got the water filled in at the bottom um, probably won't show this again for a while um, it's at least until I get that block done and start another one um, might be a little but <laughs> This uh, is, you know, when anytime you lose a loved one, your heart just breaks. It falls apart. And so this, as I've been stitching on this block in particular, I've really been thinking about my mother-in-law um, and her trips that she came to visit us when we were in the military. And I can even picture her face and all the fun she had with the girls when she would come to visit. And so it is really a healing piece, to say the least. So, and that is for that one. Um, and the last piece of homework was Expecto Patronum. And you're supposed to do 200 stitches on your Patronus. And for me, my Patronus was a chocolate bunny. Um, Hands-on design, more chocolate bunnies. This is on a 32 count Silk Weaver Signature Even Weave. Um, and I used the story of the Patronus is my rabbit because a rabbit's fast in it. And um, although I keep practicing and trying to make a rabbit that will come up as my Patronus, I keep messing up and getting these chocolate bunnies to show up. Which chocolate bunnies are good too and they have their own purpose because they keep the dementors away. So there is my story for Expecto Patronum. So homework done. Um, Extra credit. Still yeah. got, and this, I still have the bunnies to finish putting in here, and there's some carrots along the top, and it says, life needs more chocolate bunnies. So, that's the design. Samantha will be putting pictures. If you don't see pictures as the video goes through, we will put pictures on the end and hopefully slow them down so they're not like a glimpse. If you blink, you missed it, like our last, last video. Last week's video was a mess. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks for watching it if you did. Sorry. <laughs> the, we do have extra credit, and that's part of the reason I think I get so much stuff done is because of the extra credit and everything we're working on. Yeah. And so the extra credit is the same one that Samantha was talking about. Um, let me see if I can find something. Oh. I can stick this on. The profile. Yeah, it's, it's the portrait. And same so difference. this is a <laughs> Russian design. It came as a kit. It's on a 16-count Ada. Um, and it's a uh, keeper of the light is what it's called. Obey, I don't know, O-B-E-H. Um, and that's how far I am. And Samantha will insert a picture, but it's called um, keeper of the light. And I thought it was really cute. It's kind of got the gnome feel for me. So I liked it. So, um, so that's that one. I, I remember I've been on vacation. I've been doing a lot of stitching. 
this is not normal for me. Yeah. So this will not always have this much to do. You would still be. But doing I also have a daughter that's very enabling. Oh. Enabling to the point that I'm... she said, "Mom, won't you please work on your heaven and earth design?" I know. Something. Please, please, please. I didn't say that. So, I'm an influencer, not a not a. This is the you heaven saying. and earth design that I am currently working on. Um, I think I took a picture, but in case I didn't, this is the, the design. It is a mini. I am doing mine on a 14 count Ada. I had purchased a big roll of this Ada at a Goodwill shop. They didn't even know what it was. It mm. was still on the, it was a huge roll. It was like taller than It's her. taller than me. I unwound the whole thing just to see how much was there. So I don't know what it was used for, but anyways. And the people didn't even know what it was. They didn't know what it was. They asked me when I was checking out what, it, what that was and it was under $20. So, yeah, I'll take it. Thank you, please. Um, but it is Story Keep Rise of the Witches. And so I try to utilize it if there's a project I'm not real sure about. And I don't want to use, I don't want to say higher end, but more expensive fabric. And I just want to try something out. I'll typically go to that piece to try something out. Um, and this, I would struggled, as you know, with the other hate that Samantha is just flowing with. I love it. Um, so, without further ado, I got my for, across the first page. I don't have it done. I got a whole lot more to do down here. Mm -hmm. um, but this is how far I am. You can see there's a tree, tree branches, and the blue teal. If I stick this in front, you kind of maybe can picture the two of them, what they are. Um, so, I'm still working down here. At some point, there. You know, there's a lot of great groups out there. There's a full coverage fanatics that does challenges, 1,200 stitches a month or 2,400 stitches a month. I know Michelle Bendy is is active in that group. I'm in that group. I just other projects call to me more than my hate does. I have had a good time with this though since she's gotten me. Um, doing I got this. her roped in. <laughs> Who did you watch that talked about the the um, snaking snaking the threads? Uh, Handwork maniacs. Catherine. Yeah, Catherine, bossy daughter on Handwork Maniac, did boss a daughter. Boss, boss, boss daughter. Bossy daughter's the other one. Okay, boss daughter. <laughs> um, she did a tutorial, real quick tutorial, one of earlier video, and I did see that, and it talks about how she snakes her threads. Um, this is not a good example of that because these are just pieces that I had left from the top. Um, but how she does, she works back and forth and goes down her pattern and back up and yeah. then back down and back up. Um, so I did like it better when I did that. Um, we also watched, who was the other one that was, um, we just watched her yesterday. She does it on the diagonal. The needle bug. The needle bug. So check out the needle bug if you haven't seen her and you're interested. It definitely, I'm going to try that um, diagonal method. Um, Jan Hicks, uh, Jan Hicks Create, she had posted a bookmark that she's working on um, and she started doing the diagonal method and she said it really sang to her and she really is enjoying um, working on it. So I, I definitely may give that a try. It's not that I don't enjoy working on this, I do. I like seeing the progression, but I, I wanna get to where I can see more of progress. So I'm seeing a ton of progress. I got like almost a half a full leaf. <laughs> it is a it is a, a life to, a long project. It's not something you're gonna get done in a few minutes. For she sure. thought that I was gonna get my hay done in six months because of how fast I was telling her. I was like, no, <laughs> I'd have to do like five pages a month to do that. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Mine is not that long, so but it is it, it is a mini pattern and it's I don't it's it's neat. I like it. It's a Lisa Park is the art artist that did that. And the last one that I want to show, and I left this still, I don't know if you do scroll rods and you want to protect your projects. I have dogs. I have two dogs, two yeah. little chihuahua dogs. They're cute. Um they are not always friendly to things on the floor. They're not always friendly to things um, in general. So I do try to protect them. Plus I want to keep it protected from the dust or any you know outside elements, let's be real. Um, because sometimes I'll work on a project for one night and that's it, I've had enough of that project and I need to go do something else. So my solution 
My mom made this for me. It's like a pillowcase, but yeah. it's the width of my scroll frame. I have a couple different sizes for a couple different widths. Most of my ends now, other than this, I think they're like 10 inches. So like a 12 to 14 inch pouch is good. Um, and then I just clip it on the top, wherever it needs to be, just to hold it on. Just to hold it on. So I need to throw a photo. I'm going to show you what's in here. Da, 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 da. And so when you pull it out, and all I do is I grab it, whoop, pull it off. Now I'm ready to work on it. So this is my Halloween Quaker memory for you, just for you. Um, tighten it up a little bit. Uh, so we've rolled the scroll rod. I did not unroll it, nor will I unroll it until I am done with this project. But because of school magical stitches and having to do a thousand stitches in black, I like knocked out a lot of black. So mm. I was able to get the village down here um, the spiders. I just, I finished a couple of things for different projects for last week's homework. Um, so I don't know if you can see. That needle hopper would have been helpful, huh? Yeah, the needle hopper would definitely be helpful in a project like this for sure. So that's how far I am. I'm getting real close to a finish because not, not close enough memory. Um, because over here is the end point. So you can kind of see what I have left to fill in is this section here. So, um, so there's my, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. So that is all of my whips that I currently have worked on in the last week. So you don't have anything else. Okay. No. So I should let's have talk, a long time ago. <laughs> let's talk giveaway, everybody. Um, so we gave a giveaway on our third episode. Um, it's Orts You Glad. Yeah. Episode um, three. Episode three. We were going to do two. We did one. Uh, Patricia Clark. Yes. We have not heard from you yet. So I'm giving you another shout out. We need to hear from you before Wednesday. We're going to say Wednesday. Um, let me check. August let me check my calendar Saturday. here real quick. Because I want to give everybody, yeah, Wednesday, August 7th. Um, I'm going to write it in my calendar book. August 7th, giveaway. All right. You have till Wednesday to email me your mailing address so I can mail out your collapsible ORT container and a Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine. We were going to do a second uh, giveaway. So we have two. Yes. Uh, we are going to do a second giveaway um, if we reach 250 subscribers, and we were just shy of that last time. Last time we looked, we are now over 300 subscribers. Thank you very much. Oh boy. <laughs> we just it amazes us every day that we have people that like us and want to come back and visit with us and spend their time with us. So thank you for doing that. I know our videos have been on the longer side because we have two people trying to go over our haul and go over everything that we've been working on, and it does take longer time. So thank you. Um, thank you for supporting Samantha, too, as she comes out of her shell a little bit each time. She's working on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, we've passed our 250 goal. So this is what we want to do. We would like, if you're watching this video, go back to video three. Leave a comment regarding your orts. Do you keep them? Do you not keep them? Do you put them in containers? What do you do with them if you do keep them? Make sure you have the keyword orts in your response. We will do another giveaway on Wednesday. I am going to Wednesday, August 7th. We will tape a giveaway. We will do our own video of the giveaway. If I do not hear from Patricia, Patricia Clark by 5 p.m. Eastern time? We're in Eastern time. Yes? Yeah. Eastern time. Um, hey, I'm on the East Coast. Um, if we don't hear from you, Patricia Clark, by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, I am going to do a new drawing um, for the somebody stitcher. else to have an opportunity to get a punch needle primitive stitcher magazine and a collapsible fabric ort container. Um, the magazines we have is a 2019 summer issue. This is the most recent issue that was put out. And the 2017 summer issue. So if you're new to them or you haven't seen this issue, I'm mailing it anywhere. 
So it doesn't matter if you're outside the United States, I will still mail it to you. Um, it's our first giveaway and we want it to be a success. Um, we have talked about doing another giveaway for when we reach 400 subscribers. Um, so we will do a giveaway at 400 and we definitely are gonna do one at 600. So um, those are big milestones. Um, so we have some things that we've kind of set aside for giveaways um, and we may do just, just because, hey, just because we're glad you came today, we may do a giveaway. You never know. So thank you for watching us. Again, please subscribe. Rules of the giveaway. You cannot say giveaway in your comment. You, I don't want trolls. You could not say giveaway in your comment. You can, um, please be a subscriber. Be over the age of 18 so that you can give me your mailing address. Um, all and, that stuff. All that stuff. Anything else that I'm forgetting? Use orts in your comment on episode three, not this episode. This is currently episode five. This is Thursday, August 1st, 2019, when we are filming. You want to go to episode three. That is where you leave the comment. That is where we're going to pull from these two giveaways is episode three. Anything that we've mentioned, we're going to try and put in our description box below. If there's something that you're looking for that we talked about that you don't see, Email us at craftaddictk at gmail.com. I check my email pretty regularly. I will help you find it if I can or give you more information so that you are able to locate it. So, because um, we do give a lot of, of shout outs throughout our video. We talk about a lot of different hauls in our video. We show you a lot of different projects because I have a vast variety of interests. So, um, I think anything you want to say? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Um, give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. You know, don't ask her. <laughs> if you want to give us a thumbs down, if you think our videos are too long, we're trying to do the best I can to kind of shorten things up, Samantha, and still give us give you time um, to you can see what we've been doing. This has been a very busy week because of vacation, so we are going to put some pictures and video at the end um, for you to peruse if you'd like um it might be the same video the same pictures you saw throughout our video depending on how successful we were and when i say we i mean samantha yeah. was editing so um thank you again for coming and oh speaking of which stitching in the wild Samantha and I are trying to do this every every episode, yeah. so we never know where you're going to be. And we did two this time. We went to um, we Barnes and Noble. We were, Barnes and Noble. We pulled it out and was stitching there while we were after we were done shopping there. And we also did it along the creek outside, um, in the nature. Lots of things going on around yeah. us. So and we also went to a bar, but it was pitch black, and somebody decided. Oh, man. Yeah, we went to a local, it's like a family restaurant bar thing, yeah. and, and I thought, oh, I'll just take that with me. It's a little darker than... It was could... pitch black. She needed to pull out her phone for a flashlight so she could yeah. see the menu. It was pretty dark, but, you know, that being said, it, the food was good. Yeah, the food, they have oh, buffalo chicken dinner. And when we so were sitting good. on the river, or the creek, 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 Samantha heard a squirrel. Yeah, we were sitting down there for over an hour, and we kept hearing that. Well, I heard the noise. I was like, what is that? There was a squirrel eating something on a tree, like, diagonal from us. I was like, there's a squirrel. <laughs> I thought I was going crazy or something. But She's pretty excited about the squirrel, but we couldn't excited. get a picture of it. We tried, so. I tried. I, it was, it's just branches looking things. But there was a squirrel there. Its, it's tail was dangling off the end of the branch. All right, so I think that's it for today. Uh, we wish you all very happy stitching, a very happy rest of your week. Um, hopefully we have really nice haircuts next time. Yeah. Um, and um, happy vacation to us. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to comment on episode three. Yes. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Hi, Blastube. So Samantha and I are here at a local creek. It's a catch and release. Um, that's Samantha's dad, my husband, out fly fishing um, for trout. <laughs> and I thought I'd take the opportunity to share that um, with you. We haven't caught anything yet, but it is a beautiful day um, here in Western Pennsylvania. And this is one of our excursions that Samantha and I came out to out in the wilds, her and I are out in the wilds uh, working on uh, stitching. And I will get up here and show you our portable stitchy spot in just a moment. <laughs> 